Let's see if we can use the help section to dig a little bit deeper into this echo effect. But first, I think we probably need to just talk about what an echo effect actually is. So I want you to think about being in a really, really massive cave. And if you shout hello or your name, uh, sometimes you might hear it come back to you off all the various different surfaces of the cave. So instead of you just shouting hello, you get kind of hello, 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 getting slightly quieter as the sound dies away. And that's really what early recording engineers and other people were trying to recreate with tape delay or echo effects. And so what's happening is the sound that we make, if we play, say we're playing 60 and then we're playing 62 and then we're playing 64, we're taking those sounds and then we're sort of repeating them many, many times die, dying away, like we would have if we were in that really big cave. By digging through the help section, we can learn so much more about how these effects work, what they do, and how we can start playing around with the settings to make changes to the sound. So I've simplified my program here so we can get a really good idea of how echo sounds on its own. Here's just one note played with the echo effect. And you just hear that interesting character of the sound where the, the initial beep of our synth is repeated to us lots and lots of times, eventually dying away. Let's have another listen. By coming into the help section and clicking the effects tab and then choosing our effect, we can have a look at everything that is making this effect work. And the first thing we get in our listing are the default settings. And so unless we specify something else, then that's what will be applied. These are the settings that will be applied to our sound. And so when I played the sound just then, we were getting a sound with an amp of one, a mix of one, a preamp of one, a phase of 0 0.25, a decay of two, and a max phase of two. And even if we don't know anything about the echo effect, we just have these usefully set for us. That's something that sounds quite good. But that's not to say that we can't go further than that and dig a little bit deeper. And that's why we need all of this information here in this listing. The next thing we get is a sample program, which in fact is exactly the same as mine up here, except that I've chosen a different note. But apart from that, um, it's a very simple demonstration of how we can write something that involves this particular feature of Sonic Pi. The next part of the listing will, will give us a text-based explanation, which will try and put into words what is going on in this particular effect. So here it says, this is a standard echo with variable phase duration, which means that we can change or we can choose the amount of time between each playback of our echo, each echo. So you can imagine there's different types of caves, right? There's some caves where when you shout hello, the echoes come back off the walls really, really quickly. So it might be like, hello, 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 hello. There might be other caves that are so big that it takes some time for the sound to travel all the way over to the other wall and then come back and bounce off another wall. And so you might get something like, hello, 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 hello. And because you wouldn't want just one kind of echo effect being added to your music, we can change that. And that's a really important part of the character that the effect gives to the music. The other part, which I think is really important, is this decay idea. So the idea of how long it takes for the sound to disappear completely. So while it's worth looking into and playing with all of the parameters that we can set for a particular effect, I would say the two that are really going to matter to us here are phase and decay. Again, this idea of phase being the amount of time between each echo once we apply the effect and then the decay, the amount of time in beats that it takes for our sounds to disappear completely. So that's enough talking. Let's see if we can get stuck in and change some of the effects that we are applying to our sound. And the way we do that, of course, is just by specifying a list of settings that we want to have with our effect, just the same way as we would with a synth and changing the settings there. So to start with, let's imagine that we don't want our phase to be a quarter of a beat, because don't forget the default setting for echo is that the phase is 0 0.25 beats. And just like lots of things in Sonic Pi, we're not working directly with time, we're working with beats. And so because the default tempo of Sonic Pi is 60 beats per minute, here we're looking at four echoes per second. And that makes a lot of sense. If we listen to this, 
If I had to guess how many times we were hearing that sound per second, I think four is quite a good one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That feels about right. Now, say we wanted to feel a little bit more like we were in a smaller, more compact space. We could just reduce that phase time so we get more echoes per second. And the way we would do that, of course, is just sticking a comma after our FX echo statement and writing phase 0.125, which is half of what we had before. And now we should get eight of these echoes per second. And that's quite interesting. That felt a little bit tighter. The sound felt a little bit more complete in some ways because we were sort of hearing less of a gap between each playing. Because the phase length is a bit longer here, we might need to set our decay to be a longer period of time so we can hear that echo effect dying away over more seconds than just two seconds. Because here, again, we're at 60 beats per minute, so if the decay is two beats, then our decay is going to be two seconds. We might want to change that to something like five seconds. So if I write decay five, we'll hear that our effect takes longer to fade away to nothing. And it's really as simple as that to start shaping the way that these effects are controlling our sounds. And that was loads of technical stuff from me, so I think you need a bit of an opportunity to get in there and have a play for yourself. So in the next video, I'm gonna set you a challenge where you can do exactly that.